and the Fisbo says something, it takes you off your path, you handle it, like get the gas, and then you get back on where you get off when you know the path that well. <laughs> Well, welcome, everyone. Um, should we get started? Sure, Catherine. I'd okay. be happy to start. Perfect. Well, Ooh, no traffic in my How is that? Office. Where the hell are you right now, by the way? I'm in my office, but it's storefront, so sometimes well, it's loud. Oh, it's a storefront. I was going to say, what do you like, out in a tent yep. in the street? No, you know, I'm things are tough. Front. Okay, yep. all right. So, um, well, hi, everybody. Can you see my screen? I think we can see the screen. So, six drag. So Catherine is the moderator. I'm your trainer speaker and uh, so glad to be here. Be doing this. We, this is part of the series that we do every month for the lab coat, the special groups. Now I'm gonna go through a couple of new slides here. Let me click on the thing here, a little opening. First of all, uh, if you have, do me a favor, to have questions, take, first of all, take notes. Second of all, if you have questions, there's a little chat thing somewhere. Do we have somebody, Julia, somebody moderating the feed in Facebook as well? Do, or Sandra or Jake or is, if people have questions, where are they gonna write the questions? That's my, my question. Is anybody there? Jake's they watching. Write them in they, either, one. they either put it in the yeah. chat or I think Sandra is monitoring the Facebook, yeah. right? I am. Okay. I am. Great, okay. Sandra. So if there's, any, if there's any questions in the Facebook feed, uh, at the end, Sandra, you tell me, and also Catherine, you tell me as well. Uh, the rest of you, if you want to stay in touch with me, if you care, Daryl Speaks is my social media handle on everything, which by the way, there's a teaching technique. It's a good idea from a marketing standpoint, you come up with one social media handle that would be the same for everything, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Also, if everybody wants to take down this phone number really quick, you can tell you should text lab coat to this phone number. This is a, a, my personal cell. I send out motivational things for you. 631-212-3051. And there you go. All right. So we're going to, what I'm going to be teaching today is from our power agent membership. We have a gift for you guys today. If as lab coat agents, which by the way, I want to share, tell you real quick what the gifts are. This membership is only five bucks a month to start the trial. Then it's 47 after that, if you decide to continue, you get the entire access to the website and you can cancel anytime and you get bonuses. And these are the bonuses. I'm going to be talking about these. So this is really worth it. Uh, Catherine, you're a power agent. Yes. Yes, I am a very proud power agent. Uh, there's a lot of great content, guys. It's really a no-brainer. Uh, pays for itself. All the stuff that he has, the checklists for events. He helps you organize the events and so much more um, templates. Everything is a great value on that page. Thank you, Catherine. By the way, one other thing before I get into teaching this, because you're a heavy hitter. For people who don't know Catherine, this woman, she's the number one agent in the whole state of Florida, for the Keller Williams group. That's pretty good. That's not easy. Catherine, if people want to reach out to you, how do they find you? They, um, uh, I'm on social media, Catherine Rain, beautiful Miami um, in on Instagram. I, you know, I wish I had thought of having everything the same branding. So I'm a little bit behind on that. Uh, my right. website is beautiful Miami. Uh, my email is Catherine. Catherine is spelled the European way at kw.com and you, you'll find me. If you search for me, you'll find me. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get started. Gang, this webinar, there's two types. I do two. When I do our training, because I train our agents once a week in our membership, there's some of the webinars I do, I go wide where I cover a little bit of a bunch of things. And then some I go deep. Like if I'm talking about how to prospect FISBOs, I go deep on that topic, the listing appointment, I go deep. This one is a wide one, meaning I'm going to give you six strategies in an hour. So you can imagine I can't go deep on any one of the six. Um, here's the challenge that we're finding. And I just want to lay this out because we're going to address these challenges and how to fix it. One of the big challenges we have in real estate, as we know, there's fewer sellers, which makes it just harder to get listings. We've been seeing this for a while. This is we continue to have it. So you got to continue to think, how can you handle that, that problem? The second thing is, Buyers are losing houses. We're finding, and Catherine, I don't know if you're finding this with some of your buyers, 
that they're putting in offers and they lose out and they lose out and they lose out and they start to get a little bit discouraged. And so what we need to do is help keep them focused on their commitment to buying a house. Third is there's a concern what to do if the market should change. We keep getting this question a lot from my power agents is that is there going to be now that the for a foreclosure moratorium has been lifted? Is there going to be an increase in foreclosures? What's that going to do to real estate? What's that going to do to inventory? And then the last is sometimes we just feel overwhelmed. You know, we we keep getting uh, bombarded with buy this software, buy this social media thing, go on this, go on Instagram. No, 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 be a face, papa, pa, pa. and our heads spin like we're we're high or drunk or something, and so. You need to have a little bit of focus. I'm going to share with you how to get a little focus in this session. The first thing, solution to dealing with those problems is you've got to get focused and keep the faith. Get focused and keep the faith. You know, one of the things you look at somebody like Catherine, is this woman is focused on her clients, focused on building her business, constantly keeps improving the skill and ability of what she does. Every successful great agent, they have that mentality. Now, I'm going to use the analogy about, you know, keeping the faith is, um, you know, when a farmer goes out to plant a seed and, and, and to build his farm, he doesn't go out, plant the seed and get worried. Oh, my gosh, I hope it's going to work out. Is this going to produce a crop? The farmer knows if he does what he does or she does what she does and does it consistently each and every day, eventually they produce a crop. That's how we have to think in real estate. You've got to keep the faith that if you keep doing the right things day in and day out, you will see a return on that time invested. But it, that's the key. It takes time. Catherine, you've been here, what, five years, I think? You came from uh, Germany. Is that right? What was the time? No, I've, I've been here 16 years. But long real estate, time. how long have you been in real estate? Um, almost 10 years. Oh, 10 years. That's what the number was. Because yeah. I saw your post on Facebook. Because I stalked you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I saw I, I stalked you, you too, so that's totally okay. Oh, all right, good. <laughs> and we're good. So I saw the thing come at you. said, what did you say? It's amazing what hasn't been accomplished in the 10 years. I think it was yeah. a picture with the dogs on the on the table or something. I'm trying to remember. Yes. But yeah, I saw that post. I saw that. Mm-hmm. What you did in 10 years becoming the number one agent. It didn't start out that way for you, did it? No. I had $750. How much? Seven hundred fifty dollars. Me, seven hundred fifty. That's what you started with when you got into yeah. real estate. Yeah. And now, how many investment properties you got? Eleven. Eleven investment properties. Number one agent in Florida. Ten years from seven hundred fifty dollars. You all hear that? Listen, I want you to. This is very important. You wrap your because I know some of you watching this. You're not where you wish you were. You look at where you are today and you, you look at where you like to be and you, and you get frustrated with yourself. You want it now. You want, it takes time. As long as you listen, the only thing you should get upset with with you is if you ain't doing the things you know you should be doing. That's where you should be getting upset. But if you keep doing the right things, it will pay off. Now, here, let me talk about how to do the right things and stay focused. One of the things I love teaching the power agents, this is a, a screenshot from one of our power agents about the dot board. See, we teach power agents this concept to help them stay focused. Let me show you that. So Mary, one of our power agents, she posted this and we have a closed Facebook group, just like LabCo for power agents. Check out the June dot board. Woo! Yeah, here's what a dot is. If you get a listing, a listing goes into the contract, a buyer buys a house from you, that's a cut. Now she added, Mary added closings as a dot. But if you look at this dot board, that is that helps her stay focused. You'll notice in January, she started off the year good. February, she had two closings. But look, no listings taken, none in contract, no buy. That's a concern. February is much even worse. Holy cow. So part of what that does is say, I better get busy. Look what she did in April. Bada bing. She got a couple of listings, a couple of buyers. So some of us, what we need to do to keep doing the right things and planting our seeds, maintaining our farm, and I don't mean real estate farm, I mean business, using the farming as our farm as an analogy, we got to make sure that we're doing the right activities. One of the things I suggest you guys do, we created this for our power agents too. It's called the Power Agent Activity Tracker. Basically, if you were to think of all the things you could do at any given day to help your business, Here are all the activities that you can do. 
Now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the game is you want to challenge yourself and say, listen, I don't feel like working today. I don't know if you ever feel that way, Catherine. Sometimes some agents feel that way. You, you're superhuman. No, I feel like that a lot. Okay, all right. So here, the idea is, and by the way, so the challenge that some agents have like you, Catherine, is if, when you have a lot of business, there's, there's two types of activities. There's managing existing business, mm -hmm. your deals, your listings, your showings. Then there's getting new business. Correct. And we usually what happens for us is that we have a lot of existing business. We're not generating new business. So can, our business- Can I tell you a secret? Please. So whenever we have a good month, July was a very good month. And I went two weeks on vacation, but we had a good month because we had a lot of closings. But I was freaking out. I hate closings. Mm. You know why? Because that means I don't have the listing anymore. So for me, closings, I don't get excited at all. For me, it's taking a listing is the excitement. So I'm freaking out if I have a lot of closings and not many new listings. So I always look at new listings. Now, you see, I, I don't have a chart for this. I mean, I do have a chart for this, but not in this this th session now. But you just brought out, do you remember me talking about this once, Catherine, about the shoe store, that a shoe store, their job of a shoe store is they have their racks and they got their shoes that's to sell shoes. Mm -hmm. but, so, right, so when a shoe store sells a pair of shoes, what do they do? They replace the shoes with another pair. If Correct. the shoe store didn't do that, eventually they would have empty an empty store. Correct. So you got to restock your inventory. And that's exactly what you were saying. Every mm -hmm. time you sell a listing, you got to restock your shelves. Otherwise you're out of business. So I like that you think that way. Here's another thing we put together for our power agents, a little thing just to help them stay focused. Prospect, the email expires. These are all things to help build your business, not just manage it, but don't forget to keep the focus and building your business. So number one strategy in all the challenges we talked about at the top of this is get focused and keep the faith. Number two I want to talk about is choose a dial for dollars. Now, what I mean for dials for dollars, I think it's healthy, even no matter what level of business you're in, is to block out a certain amount of time each and every day where you're hitting the phones, generating new business, not managing existing. I'm going to say that again. I never said it quite this way. I think this is very, I, I like what I'm saying here. I think this is profound. There's generating, maintaining existing business and, and generating new business. We, all right. We got to try and balance between the two. So in generating new business, I think you should, uh, everybody should have a time of day that they block out maybe an hour to dial for dollars. Let me give you some examples. And, and let me tell you why I'm a fan of dial for dollars. Catherine, See, when you think about what we do in real estate, 90% of it's communication. When you're yeah. negotiating offers, right? Negotiate, it's mm -hmm. communication. You're, you're doing a listing appointment, communication. Working with buyers, coaching buyers, communication. Yes. Now, when you take away one of the five senses, which is sight, mm -hmm. meaning that you're on the telephone. Now, and actually we're taking away more than just sight. But it forces an agent to get skilled at language, at communication, because they don't have the facial expressions. They don't have the other senses at work. And that actually helps you master real estate more when you can master the telephone. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. You know, we're big. We got so many dialogues for power agents, but I'm going to focus on just a couple right now when it comes to dialogue. Number one is FISBO. This happens to be my strength. This is how to call it for sale by owner. You know, the, the, now I'm going to do a little uh, disclaimer about FISBOs. Uh, I'm going to give some advice, but whatever I say, you should listen to your, your broker gang, whatever your broker says to do. My strength is calling FISBOs. One of the classes that we do, and Catherine, we're thinking about doing our, our next live event. You know, we went on hiatus because of the the, uh, the COVID thing. And so we're thinking about bringing in another live event. It's in this live event that I actually call FISBOs live from the stage where the agents bring FISBOs. We do role play, but I call live and I pipe it through the speakers so everybody can hear the dialogue and how good it is. Now, if I speak to three, I'll schedule two. So what I'm trying to say is I'm really good at for sale by owners. And- yes, um, Thank this you, is thank how, you. This is how I found you. 
Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. One of our power agents, she said she during the, the, the dialogue, actually, this was during the pandemic, she got five FISBO appointments listed, all five. She did Howard Hanna agent, great, because of the dialogue. One of the things I'm going to say before I get into the dialogue, if you're going to do a dial for dollars and you commit to that time, you take a, I suggest you hang up a sign wherever you work in your office at home and you tell everybody, don't disturb me, I'm making it rain or some kind of sign, hang it up, say, listen, I'm hitting my targets. If you've got family, put a picture of your family, say, family, leave me alone. I'm doing this for you. That's good. You'll earn some brownie points and make them feel guilty if they bother you. But here's the most important thing is why you want to hang a sign is because you're not just telling the universe, leave me alone. I'm making, I got to do this. You're actually making a commitment to yourself that you're doing this. You see, when you put, when you hang up the sign, leave me alone, what you're now making a commitment to actually pick up the phone and make some calls. So let me go through uh, some of the dialogue. I'm going to go to the expired dialogue and show that. Not the whole thing. I'm going to zero in on one thing about things. So, by the way, I do want to say something about the FISBO. When you're really good at dialogue, like here's the, the, the FISBO. Dialogue. Hi, I'm calling about the house for sale. It's still available. Hi, this is Dale Davis Power. Ready? How are you? The reason I'm calling one of your worker brokers to sell your property. So I'm trying to do it on own. I'm just curious because you want to say the broker's free. Let me ask you this. Where you move to? Why there? When you need to get by? Let me ask you this. If I had a buyer, it's to pay your price. Pay my commission. This is how good you want to what? get. How did you do this, that? Because this is when it comes to calling FISBOs, I'm an Olympian. You know, you look at the, the, the Olympics, all these people, they master this. It takes, you want to get practice, drill and rehearse. So you get really good at it. That why, and let me tell you why, because when you're on the phone and they throw an objection at you, it's like uh, when you're driving your car and let's say, Catherine, you're driving your car to go from point A to point B. And let's say the gas, you need some gas. It's going to go empty. What do you do? You get off your path. You get to the gas station, you pump the gas, and then what do you do? You get back on the path where you got off and you continue. That's when you master the dialogue and a FISBO says something, it takes you off your path, you handle it, like get the gas, and then you get back on where you get off when you know the path that well. All right, let's talk about expires. I see a lot of chatting over here. If anybody has questions, you make sure you write it in the chat. I'm going to answer it at the end. Whatever time we got, I, I turn my thing off. So you got to, Julie, keep me on track on the time. Let's go through the expire. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I got so much to cover with you. Got, but here, when it comes to the expire, what you want to do is say this. Hi, I'm looking to copy the listing and I'm a little surprised it didn't sell. Why do you think that is? Now, that's a great question. So you call the first expire. Hi, I'm going to speak to my uh, Hi, this is Daryl Davis, probably the reason I call it. I know she has expired off the multiple listing. I wonder if that's still for sale. Oh, it is. The, I'm just curious. I'm looking to copy the listing. I'm a little surprised it didn't sell. Why do you think that is? That is a great question that helps you build that connection with that homeowner because now they start telling you, well, I think it was this and I think it was that. And then once they're done, you want to start asking, well, let me ask you, where were you folks planning on moving? When did you want to get there by? Is there any particular reason you chose that location? And again, you want to build that relationship. Number three, dial for dollar. You shouldn't do all of these, by the way, gang. You should pick one of these that I'm giving you, or two is fine. Houses for rent. I love houses for rent because now, especially unless the government does something with this moratorium and some of the states, they have their own law that they put into place. But we're going to start to see that if tenants, if they haven't been paying and if they have to move, we're going to see an opening and in invest in the investment segment is what I think. I think we're going to see more properties being available because it'll be easier to show where there's property. So if you call uh, somebody who has a house and they're trying to get it rented and you simply ask this question, I'm going to jump to this. The reason why I was calling, I see you are trying to rent your place, but I was wondering if I had someone who wanted to buy your house for a nice profit, would that be of something that you'd be interested in? That, so you can turn a house for rent into a possible listing with that very simple question. Catherine, don't That's you, uh, and listen, as a power agent, uh, you're, you're funny because you have access to all these things, but I'm going to spoil you at the end of the webinar. I'm sending you a copy of my slides so that way you don't have to find them. Uh I mean, that, that was an inside joke. Daryl knows I have problems finding the slides. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, but I'm going to take care of you after this webinar. Julie, you, you make a mental note of that for Catherine. I got yes? you, Catherine. I got, you, got you. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank God for Julie and my rest of my team. I, I wouldn't know, know what, 
I wouldn't know what I was doing. All right, past clients. Now, C Catherine, I'm sure you've got a good plan. How much of your business comes from past clients? I'm curious. A lot. Um, probably this year, money-wise, probably 40% of my income. Okay, that was good. I told you I was going to ask you another question that you didn't know I was going to ask you. That was good. This. Last year was 40% and 35% was referrals from agents. So From agents? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that, gang, from other agents? See, people like you, Catherine. I hope. One of, my, one of our power agents at Net, um, NetMean is the number one agent in the most homes sold on all of Long Island for Douglas Element. She has a book of business of over 1,100 people. See, gang, what I want you to know is one of the things about past clients is that if you nurture your farm, if you take care of your farm, eventually, you know, it's kind of like I learned something about grass, Catherine, because I like, I like to not go out and I like, I like to mess around in my yard a little bit. And, and so when you plant uh, grass seeds, they get buds on it. And then when you cut the lawn, those buds drop and plant new grass seeds. But you have to cut it at the right time because you got to give the, the a chance to bud. So that's what it's like for a real estate agent. If you take care of a client, it grows like grass and then creates some buds, which would be other referrals in business. So we're, we're creating a nice green lawn in our business. Let me, here's a real quick five-step past client call. So for those of you watching the webinar where you've lost touch with your past clients and you're trying to figure out how to get re-engaged with them, here's the dialogue. Hey, uh, Catherine, this is Daryl Davis. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Listen, Lee, recently I was thinking about my past clients and I just want to, you came to my mind and I just want to check in and see you, how you and the kids are doing, the family. Uh, and well, that's very nice of you. We're doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing super duper. So tell me what's going on with you. How are things with the house now here? We'll stop the role play. So what you want to do right now is talk about that. They're going to be, they're going to be weird. Like you're calling them out of the blue, right? So how are you? No, no, no. Don't talk about you yet. Talk about them. So number three, talk about them and how they are about maybe the, the, the job, about their business, the house, how, how they made any changes. So talk about them, 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 them. Now, at some point, they're going to ask you how you're doing and how your business is. Only then when they ask about you and you've given it a chance for them to talk about them is you're going to say, you know what? Here's what I'm finding, Catherine, in my business. Business are great. And I'm finding that people are usually, uh, because the interest rates are so low, they fall into two categories. Either they're refinancing mm -hmm. because they can pull some of that money out and still basically maintain the same monthly payment, but now they use that cash to do other things, whether it's invest or improve their home. Or they're saying, you know what, maybe we'll sell our house, take this equity and go buy my dream home. So I'm finding people are in one of those two categories. Now, what happens is sometimes people say, oh, really? Well, what do you think my house is worth, Daryl? You sold it to me five they years ago. They always ask. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They always ask that. And then, well, let me put some numbers together. Let me see. I'll go to the computer. I'll do it. I have all the data and I'll let you know. And I'll call you back. Bah, bah, bah. And if and no matter what, you can finish up saying, listen, in the meantime, you need anything, consider me your real estate hotline. Make sure here's here in case you lost it. Take down my cell number and bada bing. That's how you get re in touch with them. Now, number five idea is orphans. These orphans are people that if you're working in an office with a bunch of agents and there's all these closed files, it's very possible that there's a deal that closed that the agent who did that deal left your company. That's an orphan. So what you do is you go to your broker and say, listen, do we have any closed transactions that the agent who did that deal in this company is no longer working here? And you adopt those people into your past clients. And then you give those folks a call. There's a whole dialogue for that. And here, and just I'm going to zoom in on one part of it. The re Hi, Mrs. Hannah. The reason why I was calling is apologize. It seems as though you bought a ho house from us about five years ago. And the agent who was involved in that sale is no longer working for the company. So the reason for the apology, it seems like we might have lost touch with you. So I've been appointed by my company 
to be the new representative that if you should need anything real estate related, I'm here for you. Oh, isn't that nice? Yes. Oh, that's I love cool. that. That is so yeah. smart. That's yes. And now then when they see you do that, you start a dialogue. How are you guys doing? Are you loving the house? Have you made any major improvements? Have you ever thought about, do you know how much your house is worth? Why don't I do this? I don't mind. Why don't I do an updated market analysis? Because every homeowner should have that done at least once a year, just like how you go to the doctors for a physical every year. You should do that on your house. It's your most important asset. Why don't I do this? I don't mind. I'll go to the computer, do it up and call you back. Is that good? Good. So that'll generate a whole bunch of stuff. By the way, listen, everybody that's watching right now, if you decide to do the trial, you see that DarylSpeaks.com forward says trial. If you go there, you'll actually get the, all the dialogues. I don't have time to go over. So I suggest, I encourage you to do that. It's worth it. Plus you get everything else that's on the screen. And um, okay, one other thing, uh, Red X. This will help you in doing a dollar for dollars. This is a great company. I know Tristan and Labco, they have a relationship with Red X. I super support it, encourage you to check it out. Sandra, are you still with us, darling? Yes, darling. Is there, no, don't apologize. I just asked you, don't worry. So you didn't miss anything. Is there a, is there a, some kind of special link with Red X and, and yeah. Tristan or what? Yeah, let me send it over here. I'll post yeah, it put it. Let's put the special Red X lab coat link in the chat as well, along with the Facebook page. Gang, you have to do listen. I swear by Red X, they are the bomb. They will help you stay organized. They'll help you find the leads. They reverse it. They check it against the do not call. You cannot prospect Fizbo's expireds or your neighborhood without Red X. I'm being honest with you. Okay. It's worth the investment. Num so that's number two. How many did I say? Six? What time is it? And I. It's halfway through and I got four more to go. Let's talk a little faster. Next thing is hit the streets. Now, it's not what some of you are thinking. Let me explain it. Now, what, let, I'm going to just skip this. One of my power agents, Joanne Mills, really great at building relationship and networking and self-promotion. She did, Catherine, an open house that this, she had just, this is the type of lines. I don't know how you have it in your market there uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in Florida. It's probably, I, you know, I, I'm assuming you have big turnouts in the open houses where there's a line. On Long Island, tons of people are walking out, you know, waiting to get into a property. One of the things that I recommend that people do is when you do an open house, do a neighborhood open house first. That's what I mean by hitting the streets. Let me go back to that picture. When you do an open house, we just did a webinar last week on how to do an open house like this. You know what's great about an open house like this? Who is seeing this line around the block? Who's seeing that? The neighbors. Exactly. Exactly. This is this is like prospecting. The, the neighbors are looking out the window like, what the heck is going on in this room? Who is that agent? Ba, ba, ba. This is great advertisement over here. This is great advertisement on social media. This is a great picture to put into your listing book. I mean, there's so many great things about an open house when you have a line like this. This is what I mean by hitting the streets. Belly to belly, face to face, buyers and sellers. Now, one of the things I suggest you do before you do a public open house, do a neighborhood open house. And the reason why is because you don't want to get the neighbors out of the way. Because the worst thing you do is have a public open house and the neighbor, nosy neighbor, and they lie and they say, oh, we're, we're just looking. You know, we were in the neighborhood. Yeah, you're in the neighborhood because you live next door, you nosy thing. So you want to get these people out of the way. So you do the neighborhood open house first. Now watch this. Let me circle this. Look at, bada bing, you see that? I'm going to read it in case you have bad eyes. As the homeowner will not be present, I will provide a personal tour of the home. Ladies and gentlemen, if you send out a wedding invitation looking piece like this, telling the neighbors the homeowner won't be home, come on in. If you mail out 50, you're going to get 51 neighbors show up because one of them who didn't get the invite is going to show up because they heard about it. Now, when you're taking these buyers through the these homeowners through the house, the neighbors, you're not trying to sell the house because you know the neighbors. It's a neighborhood open house. You're not going to sell the house to them. You're going to ask questions like, how long have you lived in the neighborhood? What do you like best about this neighborhood? Do you have this similar style? What kind of style do you have? Have you ever done an updated market analysis? Why don't I do this? I don't mind. I'll be happy to give you a free market analysis. Every homeowner should have it done once a year, just like a health checkup. Bah, 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 bah. You'll get, if you have 50 homeowners coming, you're going to get 50 CMAs. All right, now here's something else. Cold Directory, another company who recommended helped you find the list of all the neighbors and the addresses. But what's better, if you listen to what we said about Red X, Red X has this thing called GeoLeads. GeoLeads, if you type in an address 
and you say, show me all the homes around the address, it looks like what you see on the screen. And you can even say, just show me people who've been there for two years or more, or one year or more. So that way you weed out the people who just moved in if you don't want to contact them. I say, just download the whole list. It goes into an Excel file. Here's the good thing. You buy it, you own it, you keep it. So it's not like a subscription thing with this part. The geo leads, you get to buy your list. Now you mail the wedding, the uh, wedding invitation looking open house thing. You have them come, you have their phone numbers, you do follow-up calls, ba 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 ba. Intro call to your farm area. So we're talking about hitting the streets. Here's something else. You call a homeowner and say, hi, this is Daryl Davis. How are you? Fine. I hope I'm not interrupting you. The reason why I was calling, I've been sending you information about the market to keep you informed about what's going on in the neighborhood. Have you been getting it? So obviously this is a good hello call to your farm after you've started doing some mailings. Now, whether they say they remember it or not, you're going to offer something of value. And there's a couple of suggestions you have. One is you can say one of the things I'm doing is I'm giving uh, also neighbors the free report on blank. Whatever report you have, I see power agents, they have tons of reports. I'll show you guys later. But so anything that's a report is good. The other thing is what I've, uh, 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 oh, here's some examples. I'm sorry, here's some examples of report. The seller's real estate guide. Catherine, have you seen this guide yet? Yes, I use it. Every seller of mine gets it. I also have the buyer's guide that you have. I use it, it's, they get it right away after they sign the agreement. And they think I put all of this together. <laughs> and, and that's the whole point. It's like we have, being a power agent for 47 bucks, right? You have like a whole team of writers creating stuff like this for you. And we want you to make believe you wrote it, you kept it, you put your contact information, blah, blah, blah. So offering a report like that seller's guide is an example. The other thing is offering a CMA or free over the phone market analysis. What I like about the free over the phone market analysis, if you call a homeowner out of the blue, and you try and get in the door say, would you like a free CMA? I'll come over, I'll go through your closets and then I'll tell, you know, they're not gonna be so open to that. But if you say, listen, I don't even have to come over. You don't have to see me. You don't know if you could trust me, right? <laughs> so let, don't, don't say that, I'm sorry. I gotta stop day drinking. Anyway, so you what you basically say to them. <laughs> uh, okay, welcome to my last, Webinar here for lab codes. Chris is going to call me up and say, Daryl, you can't come on anymore. Anyway, the free over the phone market analysis, you're basically saying, listen, just answer some questions over the phone, bedrooms, baths, and I'll give you a ballpark idea how much your house is worth. That's the free over the phone market analysis. It's a way to break the ice and build. You can actually do a mailing about the free over the phone to the neighbors saying, hey, call me. I can tell you over the phone based on scientific data that we have here in the office door knocking hitting the streets you want a door knock um so here's an example now this is larry gardner one of our power agents i you i i use larry as an example because number one he's not very attractive <laughs> i'm just kidding i love larry he's a wonderful guy but if larry can door knock and make do 70 transactions with a face like that anybody can it's to inspire everybody to look no, but here's the thing about Larry, why I use Larry is because you see that face, that's how he is. He's very exuberant. People love Larry. He's a people guy and he loves door knocking. So if that's your thing, hit the doors. Now, one of the things we do, we call him smile stops. And the reason why we call it smile stop, we have an acronym. I don't know if you can read it on the screen there. It's a little fuzzy when I zoom in like this, but the word smile is an acronym for service. You want to meet face to face. You want to invite people to talk to you by you asking questions. The L is leave behind a token and then E, elevate the relationship, meaning you're going to follow up. So when you stop by, they're not, you're not door knocking, you're dropping off smile stops. You're making smile stops. And there's a whole bunch of ideas. Here's some things from our agents that created here. A uh, Cracker Jack box with a little note saying, hey, you want to take a Cracker Real Estate Let Page help you find your prize. You won't be jacked on your real estate transaction. A little cutesy thing. Um, now this was a smile, not a smile stop. This was a closing gift that, um, that she used, uh, Peg, you see, it's a little box of candy saying, you know, packing boxes is no fun to pass the time by empty. This one, I thought that was a cute, this is one of Larry Gardner's Catherine. He gave a scoop, uh, with his loan officer. So they both put their contact information. We've got the scoop on real estate. And the reason why he shared it with the loan officer, he made the loan officer pay for the, the damn scoopers and the customization. So, hey, smart, you offset the expense. 
I like this one, a little highlight. And let me highlight some ways to get your house sold. This is a good little thing to put in the mail to send to a FISBO. I like that idea. Oh, now the party planning, Catherine, which you talked about, Tristan did this too. So we talked about this last year. How old are, you, how old are your kids, um, uh, Catherine? Seven and 12. Seven and 12. Okay, my son now, he's in his 20s. And we used to do trick or treat. I, I wish I actually could show a picture. One of the things I did, I was Darth Vader. I had the whole thing, the mask. I had a special mic. <sighs> I breathed it. Anyway, we would door knock. So I was very, I loved doing that with my kid every year. I heard about this thing from another parent after my son was already grown. I was very frustrated. I wish I had learned about it when my kid was still a kid because it sounds fun. It's called the trunk or treat. So instead of going door to door, right, you tell all the neighbors, listen, I'm going to sponsor. I got a parking lot at the school or something. All the parents bring your cars, decorate your car. You see it on the screen there. And then the kids go from trunk to trunk and, the, and there's con contests you can have. And I love this idea so much. Catherine, as you know, we created the trunk or tree party guide with flyers, mailing pieces, and it explains the whole thing. Now, let me tell you why I love this idea from a farming standpoint, because now watch this gang, your farm is coming to you. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. They're coming to a parking lot and they're all there for you to meet and greet. It's outdoors. It's safer for the kids. There's so many great things about it. I love this. We loved it so much. Julie, who's my right hand, left hand, she's listening in on this webinar to make sure I don't do anything or say anything inappropriate. She said, what if we took that concept of the Halloween trunk or treat and created a guide for any event? So my team created the parking lot party planning guide. So if you have a community you're trying to build a relationship with, you can actually do an event parking lot for something other than just Halloween. Here's some examples. I'll zoom in a New Year's Eve party, Valentine's Day, family day, Easter egg hunt, outdoor moody events, movie event, Olympics, we're having a carnival. Now you should, by the way, gang, let me just say this for people who've never met me before. Do not do every one of these because then you will be in the party planning business, not the real estate business. You pick one or two and you have fun. You got to smile in this business. It can be frustrating. The next thing is doing mailings. You know, what's old is new again. Um, I'm still waiting, Catherine, for polyester to come back. I have a bunch of clothes. And it's not happening yet. But here's what I can, here's what I can, bell bottoms is what I, I said. By, I meant bell bottoms. Although bell bottoms, I have seen them come out for the ladies. That was a trend there for a while. Yes. Anyway, it was, right? Okay. Yes, it was. So, okay, there you go. So because you got to think about it, right? How many different types of clothes are there? So it's got to come back again in uh, every style. So the mailings, because a lot of us get bombarded with emails and social media and bop, 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 constantly, mailings is actually a great place that people have run away from. And I'm telling power agents, you should be running towards because you have less competition in the mailbox like from before. And it just, the shelf life is so much better as well. This is why we have, as uh, as you said, Catherine, so many customizable forms, flyers, checklists, mailings. I'm going to show some of them right now. And, um, you know, some of you are going, through, are you guys going through a hurricane? Uh, uh, is What's happening in Florida? Is this a bad weather time now in Florida? It's hurricane season. It can happen anytime. It's hurricane season. How, ex how exciting. Okay, so what you can do is, you know, we created some, some pieces in case you know there's a storm or you're flooded out. So you customize this, you should send it out. If it's market appropriate, you send that out. Here's a neighborhood market report that we tell our students you can send out. Now, a neighborhood market report is essentially a CMA. It's what it is, but we like calling it neighborhood market report because a lot of civilians, as I call buyers and sellers, civilians, they don't know them. CMA, well, neighborhood market report. It sounds exactly what it is. I think it actually sounds better. So that's why we love. Here's something else, mailings. Watch this. You can just take these three letters and rotate it. This says, dear neighbor, I'm delighted to announce I just sold a home located at yada yada. Then you turn to the next one. Dear homeowner, dear Hana Hana, I thought you'd like to know that the following homes have sold. Then the next one. Dear Hana Hana, here's, I, I got to change that day. For some reason, I still have 1994 in there. Dear Hana Hana, I just want to give you an update what's happening in the neighborhood. But here's, let me show you the power of these three letters. 
You see, does it say that I sold these homes? No, but if I put it on my letterhead and I'm mailing it out and promoting me, it's gonna look like I'm listing and selling everything. And I'm gonna tell you something, Catherine, I've had some students who've had no business and they would take a farm area and every 30 days just bombard that farm area with one of these three letters and rotate it between these three. And after about a year or so, all of a sudden they started having homeowners calling them because they're like, you know what? It seems like you're listing and selling everything in the neighborhood. That's why we're calling you. So this is a great way for an agent to brand themselves as a top producer by doing that. So that's number three, hit the streets. Oh my gosh, I got three more and I'm running out of time. Become a little bit more tech savvy. Now I said a little bit more. We had a coaching call today for our power agents. Every Monday is our coaching call. And the power, one of the power agents, uh, Catherine, lovely lady, she's in her 70s, and she's like, I've been falling behind. I'm a little overwhelmed with this. I get it. So here's what I tell people that are a little overwhelmed with technology. Just get a little bit better. Don't look at all the tech, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, PowerPoint, Zoom. I'm confused. Relax. Take, you're not a stupid, any of the older, this is not, any of the older people are watching this, if you're worried, because you feel like you don't know what's going on in, in the world, just you, you've succeeded in your life before. You just, you're a smart person. Just take one thing at a time. Let me give you some examples. I'm just gonna highlight. I think it's a good idea that you have something that you learn when it comes to how to visually communicate. Okay, there's three choices, PowerPoint, Keynote, or Google Slides. The reason why this is good is because if you want to do a listing appointment, you may want to digitize it on one of these platforms because you can also email it. Now, Catherine, do you use one of these three? Yes, I use Google Slides and I do all my buyers and listing presentations via Google Slides on Zoom. You see? So now there's several options that Catherine has. When she's talking to a buyer or a seller via Zoom, which, by the way, if there was one thing that might have turned out uh, as a positive from the pandemic is that it helped some of us get more online. Like, it's more acceptable. You don't have to jump your push in a car to go do a listing appointment, Kathy. You go, you too. I don't have, let me just get on a Zoom call with you. But I mean, have the conversation, right? Am I right? Yes, I love it. It, right before the pandemic, you'd be, why is she so lazy? You don't respect me to come to, how are you going to sell my house without looking at my beautiful house? I have a 14 karat gold toilet bowl that you have to experience. <laughs> so here, now it's acceptable where you can say, yeah, let's just do a Zoom thing. And then you use your Google slides to do your presentation. And you can actually email them some things in a slide format as well. A lot of benefits to this. So there's just an example. Figure out one place to present. Or use a, let me go back. One software, either PowerPoint, Keynote, for your, if you're an Apple person, or Google Slides, to learn that's one of those three softwares. That's number one. Number two is a video platform to communicate with this over here. We're on Zoom. With Zoom. So for the old people, when you hear people saying, I'm Zooming, this is what it looks like. You're Zooming. Learned how to use Zoom a little bit, sharing a screen. Okay, last thing that you need to have is a C, uh, CRM. Now our students, we have Power Builder because there's a, we have our own for our power agents. The good thing about Power Builder, you can automate your tasks. You can actually do social media posting automatically. It's a set and forget, I love, that's my favorite part of it. It has a newsletter written for you. You don't even do it. It just gets sent out for you. You want to edit, you can, or you have a lead capture. Now, I know uh, Tristan loves, Sandra, what is the one that Tristan loves for Lab Code Agency record? What's the code, the one? Chime. Is it Chime? Is it Chime? It might be Chime, Chime or which oh, one are you? Go ahead, Sandra. You there? Yeah. Chime and the actual follow-up boss. <laughs> It's and Chime and the, we're, we're currently using Chime and follow up boss. There you go. Thank you, Jake. Everybody's like, who's that man now talking? We got a whole team behind us right now that makes Catherine and I look pretty. So Jake, it's Chime, it's it's follow up boss and Chime is the two. Which one are you using, Catherine? I'm using Chime. Chime. There you go. So point being, those of you looking to get a little tech savvy, you got to have a CRM. You have to, yeah, like if you, that's the top of the list if you're not using one. Number five is use social media to capture leads. 
you know, make sure you guys follow Catherine because Catherine is successful. I don't know how she does. She's always on posting stuff, <laughs> selling. Yeah, it's great. You are a good model to watch, to Thank follow, you. to see. This is how a successful agent uses social media. I'm going to give you additional ideas really quick on this call right now. You know, think about doing some live videos um, on topics like, hey, how to do curb appeal. Like we, Power Agents, they, we give them this 15 ideas. This is just a reminder for me. It doesn't have to be one of these. But it could be how to, the three most important things to look for in buying a house. How to create curb appeal for, when selling your home. So you listen, here's the thing, gang. You are a real estate professional. You know what there's, there are certain topics. You can just think of something and say, you know, let me just talk about it. Now you can go live. Or, well, I don't like doing live because when I do live, sometimes I make mistakes that I can't undo. Once it comes out of this mouth, I'm done. So some, some webinars are very risky. This is why we have... do this today, huh? <laughs> That's right. See, wait, this is why a lot of companies, they hire me once for live webinars and usually I don't come back as, oh my gosh, I can't believe you said that. So therefore, when I'm doing marketing things, I like to record it so I can edit it and clean it up. Um, <laughs> but here's one of the things you can do is do a, you can promote a seller's workshop on how to sell your house in today's crazy market. That's a great social media thing to promote. And you have a Zoom. You see, you got to learn Zoom and you have you promote the little workshop. You can create a flyer, do the flyer and do a mailing to your neighbors or to your farm area. We have these all templates, Catherine, that the power agents have. But again, I'm going to send this to you. One of our Christine, she said the amount of information we give is amazing which you said at the beginning of this, I appreciate that as well, Catherine. But let me show you some of the value pieces I think is gonna come up. The eight risks homeowners take when they choose to sell their own home. You see, if you had that report and you advertise that for people, they're gonna opt in to get that report to avoid those mistakes. This is one of my favorites, multiple offer situation. How to win when you're on the buyer side and when you're on the sell side, how to deal with multiple offers. That's another... This is one of my favorite things that we produce for the power agents because it's so important. And this is something you give to buyers and sellers. The buyer's guide, Catherine, is what you said is one of your favorites, right? So the seller's guide, the buyer's guide, the 184 things that we do to earn our commission, forget about it. This is, this is, I love this because this justifies why we earn what we earn when you have the 184 things. And um now, listen, I have, I love children. And part of uh, why that is, is because I had a really bad childhood, Catherine, I think you know a little of my story. And so anything that helps children. So we have this, this hidden company uh, uh, mission, or at least I do personally as well, uh, anything we can do to help children. And when it comes to children moving from one place to another, it can be a little traumatic and they can't articulate it. So we created this guide to how to make moving a fun thing for uh, for uh, for children, and so that's something that we're really proud of. Yeah, it's it actually started out as only like eight pages, and then it grew into this crazy thing, and we're really proud of this piece. Um, the easy move guide for people, the seller's guide that we talked about, and what you want to do in social media is create a landing page like this where it says, hey, if you want this guide, the seller's guide, fill out this lead capture form and then we'll email it to you. And um, this is how you use that social media guide. So you can do a postcard mailing to have people say, I want a copy of those guides. Um, and there's, a, there's an Instagram version of it too. So that's number five, we're coming to number six. And then we're gonna go to questions. We have time, we're doing good. Catherine, thank you so much. Okay, just letting me burn through this. Number six, improve your listing conversation. Now you'll notice it says listing what conversation. It doesn't say presentation because we don't like power agents to present or to sell. Our motto is how we serve people, we don't sell them. We coach people, we don't close them. And so people don't want you to close them or sell them, but they'll have a conversation with you. And uh, I'm going to skip the testimonial. Here's how I think you should do a listing appointment. Everybody is four sections. Uh, we want you to be real and authentic. And um, here's the structure of it. And by the way, the reason why, did you hear me talk about this ever, Catherine? I don't always talk about it, about Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, why they're there, because you're, you're, you're an actress behind in, in your olden days. So you might be interested in this little analogy. Have you ever heard me talk about this? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. 
they learn dance steps. When they get on the when when they got on the dance floor, they would take the steps and organize it into a routine. But you got to know the steps and then take the steps, put a routine. To me, that's a listing appointment. The, dan the, the dance floor is the table with the homeowners, virtual or in person. Your dance partner is your sellers. Based on your seller's commitment, their urgency will be the tempo of how the conversation or how the dance goes. The dance steps is your metaphors and analogies, the language, the, what you say is the dance move. So let me go through the routine. Uh, R stands for rapport. You want to build that connection with that homeowner that they like and trust you because that right there is 50% of the whole appointment because I don't care what company you're with or how successful you are. Here's what we know. If they don't like you, they ain't listing with you. So it's very important. That right there is 50%. That is the equalizer. Sometimes Catherine, agents who aren't a top agent, if they compared with you, they're like, oh, I'll never win a listing compared to Catherine. To me, that R levels the playing field. All right. If okay. right, if they don't like you, Catherine, which is uh, would be an oddity, but if they didn't like you and they like somebody else, they'll they'll go probably lean towards happened the other to person. Me. So it happened to me that they gave it to a new agent because they liked them better. I was just too strong for them. Because you, know? you, you see, some people, you know, you're probably in that you came out. Your German came out. Yes, I came out too strong, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> you can't get. That's all right. Can't get them all. Can't get them all. Engage. So how do you engage somebody in a conversation when you're in a listening point? You ask questions, you have two ears and one mouth, you should communicate in that proportion. Listen twice to the amount of speaking that you do. The listing happens in the listening, not mm -hmm. so much in the speaking. Then you want to give them advice. So once you engage and you've asked questions, where you move to, why they're, when you, when you get there by, what's what they're committed to, then you're going to give them advice. And I'm going to teach the coaching part really quick. I'm checking my time. And that is what we do on a listing appointment and what we do for homeowners is we don't just sell their house. What we do is we help people get to their next level because any homeowner who's looking to sell their house, they don't wake up in the morning and say, I, I, you know, I'm bored, honey. Why don't we sell the house? No, <laughs> they, right? They, the reason why people sell the house is because they are going somewhere in their life. They're closing a chapter in their life and they're writing a whole new chapter. When you think about it, what we really do is help people get to their next level in life. What we do as listing agents and selling agents is we find out what somebody is committed to. And based on the commitment, we give them the appropriate coaching to help bring their commitment into reality. And that's what you do on a listing appointment. You don't try and sign the listing. You find out why are you selling? What's important to you? What are you committed to? Well, let me give you some advice, the A, on how to accomplish that. And this is where you talk about what you can do to help them get moved on in their life and to the next level. You talk about MLS and the yard sign, how you do what you do to help that, like you've helped so many other people. And then when you're done, you list and leave and get the heck out of there before they change their mind. <laughs> All right. Now, listen, if you are, I'm done. We're going to open up to questions. But listen, if you, Labco folks, make sure if you, uh, I forgot to mention this. There is a slide, one of the gifts we're gonna give you is the uh, 103 PowerPoints on how to do a listing point with a recording. Everything on the screen, if you go to that website, you can get that. But here's the last thing to summarize everything that we just said. Number one is get focused and keep the faith. You gotta trust that's gonna work in your favor. Pick a dial for dollars. I gave you a few ideas, pick one or two and be consistent with that. Hit the streets. Become just a little bit more tech savvy. Even if you, those of you that are tech savvy, you know you can get a little bit better at that in certain areas. Um, use social media as a strategy. Improve your listing conversation. And of course, for five bucks, don't forget to become a power agent. Now, we're going to open up to questions. And Catherine, how did we do? Yeah, you're muted. Oh, you're muted. muted. I, no, think we right. did, I think we did very, very well. I mean, I learned a few new things. I uh, never thought of calling rentals as potential listings. And I'm going to start doing that now. Awesome. Awesome. And I think also because of this moratorium, there's going to be an opening. There's a couple of things are going to happen. I think there's going to be more uh, landlords looking to replace their tenants. So we're going to see more ads or more marketing for houses or units for rent. And we're going to see an increase in actually tenants as well. So I think the investment market is going to actually grow 
over the months uh, and even years to come. Now, some of you might have questions either on the Zoom, so you can write it in the chat, or if you're on Facebook watching this, you can write it there. So Sandra will read your question on Facebook, and then who should do the chat one? Catherine, do you want to do that? Or Julie, you want to do that? I don't care. Um, I've been keeping an eye on it. Um, somebody was asking, what's the L in real? Um, I already answered that. And then um, there was another one earlier. We got a question from Facebook, Ariel. From All right, Sandra, let's jump to, let's jump to Sandra. Go ahead, yeah. Zoling. Yeah, look, from Lori Craft, she asked, how do you manage DNC list? Okay, who asked that question, Sandra? No, no, Sandra, you, I'm sorry. Who is the name of the person? I'm sorry. Uh, the person is Lori, Lori Craft. Lori, listen, Lori, I'm going to say something here that's not politically correct. So, um, but I'm telling you, I, again, I am the FISBO. I know FISBO is good. So I'm, I'm coming with education here. And whatever your broker says to do is what you have to listen to. But there is a lot of wrong information when it comes to the do not call list and for sale by owners. The, fit, the do not call list does not apply to for sale by owners. Now, NAR would never say this. No association would say this. And the reason why is because it's a political hand grenade for NAR to say, yes, you can call. Like, they can't do that. So they're going to go the conservative opposite way, okay? But when I'm going to tell you what the do not call list says. The law says that you cannot call and solicit somebody um, when they are on the do not call list. That doesn't apply to us. Solicitation means selling. We're not selling anything. We're not selling stocks, bonds, magazines, or aluminum siding. We're not asking for the credit card over the phone. Not to mention the fact that the homeowner is the one who started it by placing an ad and said, hey, I'm selling my house. Call me. We're responding to their ad. It doesn't apply. So you can call FISBOs, even if they're on the do not call list. Next question, Sandra. Thanks for that, Daryl. I love, I love to hear that. So yes. From, yes, so far, that's what we have. That's it. Me. That's it. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Anywhere? I think, Julie? Catherine, I think you were so. pretty clear on everything. You want All to right. share the bonuses again, Daryl, or no? Uh, yeah. If any of you want to become a power agent, where's that slide? Um, it is Wait at the so beginning, I think. <laughs> yeah. Here's the bonuses. Wait, let me get my, where's my mouse? It's hidden under the papers. Here, give me a second. Here we go. Um, there is all the bonuses there. So listen, if you guys want to become, I highly encourage you, if you just for the five bucks, everything on that screen is on that site. So if you go to darylspeaks.com forward slash trial, and you can get everything that is there for you guys and become a power agent like Catherine. And Tristan, Tristan's a power agent. Hoorah. Mm. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. We're both power agents. I love that. Yes, you are. I saw Catherine's eyes uh, light up when, when you were talking about orphans. I think she's, that might yeah. be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something um, about orphans. Please. I see orphans also a little bit different than just uh, calling, you know, people that were abandoned from my company. When I am the listing agent and the buyer's agent brings the buyer and doesn't follow up, and especially if the buyer, I try to be present in either the walkthrough or the inspection and the buyer tells me that they only want to stay for a few years, I'll make sure they are on my follow-up list. And I can tell you how many times later when they decided to sell, they called me, not the agent that brought them because their agent never followed up. Now, I want you to know, I am 100% in agreement with you. And I tell all power agents to do the same thing. Well, I'm, at, I'm curious to see your response to this because some agents will say, yeah, but you can't do that because it's not your buyer. It was the other agent's buyer. So what would you say to an agent who says that? Well, it's not your client after closing. It, the, the client belongs to, you know, to the universe. So if you don't follow up, I will. I love it. <laughs> And, and, and just to highlight what you just said, Catherine, if you take one street, like a farm, let's take a farm area, everybody in that farm most likely did that moved in because of some other agent in some other company. So does that mean that you don't farm ever? 
Because, yeah. Do you call a FISBO and say, before I, pro before I talk to you, did you buy your current home through another agent? Because I'm going to make sure that I help them get their business. If the, well, the craziness, right? It doesn't so, work like that. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Okay, good. All right. Sandra, anything else that we should do? So, by the way, gang, for those of you who don't know, Sandra and Jake, the other one, he's very shy. He's quiet. Behind the scenes, these are the two, they are two of many wheels in the Tristan lab coat. They run system. the show. But these two are them. These are the really important ones. I don't know about the other ones, but Tristan and Sandra, they're the bomb behind everything. So all the education, all the value that you get from this group, this is the this is the fire behind it, Jake and and, and Sandra. So you should any chance you get to thank them, you should. Oh, thank you, Daryl. It's true, it's man. It's true. true, true. Without Absolutely. you guys, this would not be heaven. Yep, no doubt. Thank All right. You. So so Sandra Boss, tell me, are we done? Yeah, I think we're done. And then um, did somebody ask, and I think uh, Julie already answered it, what do you get with the $47 per month? Yeah. So Julie already answered it. So yeah, there's a lot there's, of content. I mean, you get so much stuff, you can't even go through it. It's yeah, it's if, if I would need another 15 minutes to explain the whole power program site and, and all that it's offered and the coaching and the live webinars and stuff. So the best thing to do is just do that $5 thing. And, uh, and you'll be able to get a yeah. sense and you'll get to learn about us and become like Catherine and Tristan and all of other wonderful students and power agents we have. Yeah, it's the best investment you'll ever have. <laughs> yeah. Once you're Sandra, in, you. you'll, never get, you'll never go out once you're in. We love your, we personally oh. use the uh, Smile Stops. Tristan, the Smile Stops, we love it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Good. That's great. great it makes us content, smile. Daryl. Great content again. Thank you so much for being on. I mean, I recommend you to every agent because it's really a no-brainer. It's great uh, content for little money. And um, I can't thank you enough for doing this for Lab Code Agents. Um, we love to have you on. Thank you for today. And Catherine, and thank you. I'm going to say goodbye as well. But I do want to just, you know, all kidding aside. I mean, you are a very busy agent. And for you to take the time to support Lab Coat, Tristan, and give back to the industry, I do this for a living. But what you do is much more because you do this just to give. So God bless you. Thank you for, yeah. for being you. Okay. Appreciate all right. it. All right, Yo, guys. Have a great day. I love you all. Bye, love everybody. Bye. Bye. Keep smiling. <laughs>